former voice actress Hiroko Konishi shares her hashtag me too story. Former voice actress Hiroko Konishi, who is best known for voicing Sai Sawanogoshi in Magic Users Club, Sena Kokabayashi in You're Under Arrest, and Akane Kimidori in Dr. Slump, wrote an article on the Japanese online news website, Irona, sharing her thoughts on the hashtag MeToo movement in Japan, as well as her own experience with harassment from her superiors. The article is titled My Tell All Story About the Demons Lurking in the Voice Acting Industry. In the article, Konishi shares a story from when she was active in the industry 20 years ago about how she was con- coerced into going to a mixed batting spring alone with her manager and an anime director she was told to go into the spring sneaky with the director in order to thank him for all the assistance he had given her. She was later told that the director would sometimes go on pleasure tips, pleasure trips and that her manager brought her along to teach her about how the industry worked. However, because she refused to get into the bed with the director of the state at the time. She was later shunned and denied voice acting roles. Konishi previously shared an abridged version of the story on Twitter last year. Outer the maid, male anime director from The Story is Left Unnamed. In the article, her tweet identified him as Akitaro Daichi, director of Fruit Basket, and the long-running children's anime Prince Makaro. Konishi was originally meant to voice a character for Jubi Chan 2, the counter attack of Siberia Yagyu. Another anime directed by Daichi but was removed from the role. She said a character Jubi Chan the Ninja Girl, Secret of the Lovely Eye Patch, was originally modeled after her, and her hometown of Kawagui also inspired the work. When the sequel anime was being made, Kunishi said that her role in developing the work was concealed. In the same tweet thread, Kunishi revealed that she quit. She quit her role as Ujoru Maru from Prince Makaru. After she found out that her voice was being used for Ujoro Maru merchandise without her permission, when she complained to her agency, uh, agency about it, she was told that she was being cheeky and that she would not be able to work in the animation industry unless she kept quiet. The NHK denied Konishi's claim that she used her voice without permission. In her tell article, Konishi not all provided more context to that incident, but also spoke about the problems of sexual harassment within Japan and the voice acting industry in more detail. Japan has had its own lukewarm hashtag me, hashtag me too movement. As such, there were articles reading about why I quit my role as Ojo Maru in relation to the hashtag me too issue. However, I realized keenly that women in Japan face harassment at a different level compared to the rest due to women being a weaker position. She said that she was active in the industry. It was common for anime staff to go on trips and attend drinking parties together, and mentioned that there was social pressure in her, her to attend as well. There was a wide unspoken assumption that voice actors had to hustle themselves to get work. This was how she ended up going on an information trip to the mixed batting hot springs with the manager and Daichi, despite feeling very uncomfortable drawing it. At the time, the head of the agency was in events said things like, you had to sell yourself, and uh, other female voice actors at the agency would whisper among themselves about how you can get by with or just being a good actor. Konishi explained, Konishi initially joined that the Hot Springs visit was just a regular social gathering. She got a bad feeling during the car ride, and her manager asked her if she had brought a swimsuit. She wondered why she had to wear a swimsuit when she thought she was going to bed without any men around. Her manager told her threateningly that she needed to provide service. When she told herself that the manager was just making a joke until they arrived at the mixed batting open air hot spring. After getting into the water at the woman's only bath, she realized that none of her fellow voice actresses were around despite the fact that they were show having a group. Kunishi realized that they hadn't worn swimsuits and had gone to the mixed bath. After that realization, she batted by herself with a feeling close to guilt. Later, she was asked by the staff when she didn't come to the mixed bat, but she responded that she didn't bring her swimsuit. They laughed and replied, you didn't need to wear the swimsuit. I never forget the way my manager laughed sonically beside me, Konishi wrote. Konishi was never invited to any similar pleasure trips again, and the incident took its toll in her career. She said that she was reminded of an incident last year. And when we head to the NHK Saga Prefecture branch introduced to the women's bed area at the hot spring be used by the female staff. Although, Konishi noted 
that her own story did not involve a man shamelessly intruding the woman's bed. The hot springs were still a place where women were manipulated drawing power differences and group psychology. She stated that none of the women could truly consist the actions they performed in the setting because they fear they would lose work if they did not comply. Voice acting is a kind of work, but the voice is a product is a product, and many believe that besides having the acting skills, they also need to plug themselves. Onisha explained, Of course you need the ability to promote yourselves in any industry, but with voice acting there's no moderation. Harassment is a rampant in this industry because voice actors take on work as freelance contractors. Even if you belong to an agency, you're late you're late to think you continue to get jobs all as long as you stay quit. Konishi remarked that these tendencies have been ex exacerbated when anime became a subculture targeted at adults rather than simply a pastime for children. These days, there are more voice actors aiming for the popularity of an online idol. They do gravel shots at the magazines, sell CDs, and do performance at anime game events rather than aiming to be actors. They aim to be idols. This shift has not come without consequences. Konishi warned, their success has hung at demons. He within the industry. She shared a personal story which she heard from a friend in the industry whose husband has been having adulterous affairs with a numerous voice actresses at the time. She was such an open secret and one of the voice actresses involved in the affairs even told her this is how things work in the industry upon confronting her husband about the tissue. The friend was physically abused, they divorced and Konishi's friend now works and raises her child as a single mother. Konishi also also recounted another story where her manager basically struck one of the voice actors who we worked with because he was angry at her, at her for being late at the, to a meeting. When the incident report was reported to the head of the agency, the manager claimed that he acted within his means and the head let him off without any punishment. Konishi felt uneasy about this resolution and eventually quit, quit the agency because of it. Many articles here, eh? By saying that he's acting with his means, the manager reducted the voice actor to a shameless sea hustler. When Nishi wrote, she remarked that when factors were reduced to hustlers, it became stereotyped as, as people who couldn't anything the attention whose acting skills is only secondary. Excuse. Only secondary to the work that distorts the relationship between managers and their talent and makes voice actors feel obligated in the appearance of demons. Konishi concluded the article by stating that there is a mountain of the other stories I would like to unveil, but that these will have to be stories for next time. She stressed that it was important to share these stories, not just for the implications that they have about the voice acting and entertainment businesses, but because it shed light on the inequalities within human relationships. I understand. Hashtag me too to be moving about ending unfair relationships, relations with making our society healthier. Of course, there are worries about human rights violations when the accuser comes forward, and that's why we need to exercise due intelligence. I don't want the hashtag me too ways to stop. It is in correcting these awful traditions which have gone on for the long, for too long. It is changing society for the better. I don't mind if it simply becomes an experiment that works somewhere. People may be able to use these public stories to drive away the demons on their own lives. Now then, who would be next demon lord to get scattered to the winds?